where we put the food in foodie. And boy, oh boy, have we got a show for you tonight. Thanks so much for coming out, folks. We're gonna have some laughs, all right, all right. Now, just the other day, I was wandering through the grocery store, you know, checking out some fresh produce, and I thought, what do you call a single kernel of corn? A unicorn! <laughs> Okay, okay, but seriously, seriously, if I've learned one piece of wisdom to impart, it's that you should never tell secrets in a cornfield. There's too many ears! <laughs> All right, folks, hear me out, hear me out. I need to know, what does a kernel of corn call its dad? Popcorn! Oh. Hey, what did you expect? The jokes are gonna be corny when today's episode is all about corn. <laughs> Coming up, Tyra and a Kid Food Nation hero are on the Six Nations of the Grand River Territory, discovering the traditional Haudenosaunee way of preparing corn. Some aspiring foodies and comedians see if they can take the corny jokes to the next level. And corn is truly celebrated as Chef Joseph shares his yummy take on a traditional indigenous corn dish. If you want to get involved, and I know you'll want to, head to ytv.com slash kidfoodnation and let PC Children's Charity put the power of food in your hands. Now enough from corny little old me. Let's see who Tyra's meeting. My name is Yundas Yundas. I am Mohawk Nation. I am so excited to be here. Thank you so much for bringing me along, Yunde. Do you want to have a race? Yeah! Ready, set, go! <laughs> <laughs> I think you won. <laughs> You're a fast runner. Hi, Ra. This is my dada. I'm Tyra. It's nice to meet you. Can you explain to me why uh, the garden is so important in your culture? The garden itself is part of the environment. It's in part of all the things that are here. We try to live within the garden. We understand that the garden itself, when we're here, is a product of the grandfather, the thunders that bring the rain. It's a product of the Mother Earth that provides the soil, all the ojiqua, all the little uh, insects, and everything that's within the environment is what creates the environment. So we're just visitors to it. I'd love to see it. Let's go to the garden. Okay. So Terry Lynn, I saw onions and tomatoes and strawberries and herbs. Is that what we're picking today? They have pretty much had their season now. We're kind of done with those. Right now it's time for, as you can see, all the corn has turned yellow. So yeah. it's corn picking season. When you pick corn, we kind of hold a little bit of the stalk. Okay. We grab the cob itself and you pull it sharply down fast okay. and you hear it crack. Okay, can so I try? It, yep. Okay, so I hold here. Yep, give it a good crack. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> Your first cup. Yay, that's so exciting. I'm good. Yeah, Thank I'm good. you. I've heard a little bit about the Three Sisters. Can you explain that? The Three Sisters for the Haudenosaunee people is actually an agricultural system. It's a way of growing. So three things that, at minimum of three things that go together. If somebody plants tomatoes, garlic, and parsley, that's a system. Right. That's a Three Sisters. So it's not just corn, beans, and squash. You will find in an actual true Three Sisters garden, there's about 11 to 15 sisters. Those uh, bees and insects that visit are really important as well. Right. So you have to have the flower to go with right. it or, or you're not going to get that. Yeah, I noticed all of the different flowers that are in and around the corn. Mm -hmm. So those are all coming up for a reason to support the corn. Yeah. Good That's job. my workout for today. <laughs> Let's Good job. go. Hi, I'm Tyra. We brought you some corn from the storage. Thank you, Tyra. I'm Tanya. Um, I'm actually Yunde's aunt, and Terry Lynn is my mother. I think we should show her how to use the sheller. You want to do that and help me? Great job, Yunde. Okay, Tyra, you can put your corn right in here, okay. and that's going to take all of it off. Wow. So this is our sheller. Oh, you're tough. <laughs> wow. And you'll see the corn cob pops right out, and it's all nice and clean. I'll hold farm. it. You'll turn it. Okay, I'm going to turn it. <laughs> oh, this is so cool. Go fast. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay, you stick it in there, Yunde. Now that our corn's nice and clean, we're gonna take it and we're gonna throw it in our hot water that we have going over the fire. That's gonna be step one for our cooking process. When you eat popcorn and it gets stuck in your teeth, yeah. that's the shell, right? So that doesn't cook when you boil it. We're actually gonna take the ashes from the fire and we're gonna put them in the water. Really? It's gonna help break down that shell. You can slowly start to see that yeah. the color, see how the white's kind of turning like a yellowish? Yeah. That's something I'm gonna be gifting to Chef Joseph when he gets here. Awesome. <laughs> Taste test! Corn? You got 
corn with butter on it. Should we try it? Yeah. Cheers to the corn. Boo. Why do you love corn? Juicy. What did the cop get for Halloween? What? Candy corn. What do you call a cheese that is a mules? I don't know. Nacho cheese. That was corny. What did the corn say when it received the compliment? I don't know. Oh, shucks. <laughs> <laughs> This is my day off of science. I was gonna have a nice relaxing day of beauty masks and finally settle in to watch my programs. Since my me time is over, come bear witness to my straight up scientific genius. If you want the freshest popcorn, it's gotta come straight from the cob. This corn is ready for popping. solution here. I bring this puppy with me everywhere. All right. Huh. Best corn mazes? How to clean your toilet if a corn gets stuck in there? Oh! Here it is. How to pop corn. Popping corn has a hard shell exterior and a starchy center. When it's heated, the natural moisture in the starchy center turns to steam, building up enough pressure until BAM! It explodes. Okay, that's all fine and dandy, but what about sweet corn? No matter how hard you try, sweet corn from corn on the cob won't pop. Oh, it's picked in its immature stage and has too much soft starch. You'd be a fool to try and pop this corn. Ah, science, man. It'll get you every time. Hi, Chef Joseph. Hello. I'm Tyra. This is Yunde, and this is Tanya. Sego Joseph, this is the corn that we nixtamalized this morning, so we wanted to gift that to you to use today. There you go. Oh, um, much. Thank you very much. Tanya, you will have to join us for dinner later. Definitely. <laughs> okay, I'll see you later. Have fun. Bye. Are you ready to get cooking? I'm ready! Awesome! What are we making today? Today we're going to be making a, a nice grilled rainbow trout with a white corn succotash. How can we help? So I'm going to get you to start chopping the red onion. So okay. Just a small dice. So Chef Joseph, what nation are you from? So I'm Odawa. I'm from part of the Three Fires Confederacy on Manitoulin Island. It's about six hours north of uh, southern Ontario. Are there differences between the ways that each nation cooks? The indigenous diet, it's very regional based. Our diets are based around the terroir of where we're located, right? So right. this is my way of preserving our history is through the food that we eat. Can you tell me a little bit about the succotash dish? Yeah, so I wanted to do a play on using traditional indigenous ingredients to uh, to southern Ontario. It's my way of just paying homage to uh, the peoples that are around us every day, right? What happens now? So now I'm just gonna go take this over to the fire and start cooking the succotash. Sounds good. It's yeah. fish time. Fish storm. Yeah, so we're just going to slightly just cut this into thirds. Okay. A little pepper on both sides. Okay, we're all seasoned. What do we do now? So now that we're good to go, we're just going to take this over to the fire and get cooking. Okay. Our son, Hawk, has joined us because he really likes cooking with his daddy. Mm -hmm. Inside down first because it's going to get nice and crispy. Ooh, yum. This looks so beautiful and I am hungry. Indigenous peoples only harvest and gather as much as we need to sustain us. Thank you so much. <laughs> this is Kahonawa. 
So Tyra, how do you feel after your first succotash? I am feeling so inspired. From the way that you care for the land, to the respect you give the food and the harvest, to only using what you need, it is incredibly powerful and I am really grateful to be here with you today. If you're feeling as inspired as I am, you're gonna wanna head to ytv.com slash kidfoodnation to learn how you can put the power of food in your hands. A beautiful day, a beautiful meal with beautiful people. Sounds like another perfect day on Kid Food!